found out at the age of 18 that if I believed in Jesus, that I would have eternal life. It's a common theme in, the, in John's Gospel, of course, the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3:16. Well, nowhere in the Bible is are the words eternal life defined, except in one place. Later on in John's Gospel, in the chapter we're in right now, in chapter 17, verse 3, he talks about eternal life, and he defines it as it being in a state of knowing God and his son Jesus who was sent. It's a present realm that we participate in through knowledge of Jesus. Salvation comes when we have an interactive, intimate knowledge or knowing with God. I think if we limit it to believing in God or praying to God, we're actually missing the essence of eternal life, which is here and now. In Galatians, Paul tells us that it's not just about knowing God, but actually more about being known by him. God knows about every human being he's created on planet Earth, but there are certain people that know him, and more importantly, he knows them in return. Intimate, interactive relationship. We visited my son Joey and his wife Hope this week and uh, got to see uh, the, the fruit or the product of their knowledge of each other, which of course is our awesome and beautiful grandson, Judah. They work together, they partner, and the result of that partnership was new life. The question is, is, is there an interactive intimacy happening with God right now between us and Him? And how does that function in today's world? This is the definition, according to Jesus, the only definition of eternal life, an in in interactive knowing and partnering with God. Salvation is something that happens now it's something we actively participate in, and it's something that actively produces new life, new fruit. If we look at it through this paradigm, then the question is, is how do I develop this interactive partnership with God? What do I do to make that happen? We can't stop at believing. It must go much further than believing.